Tired of buying can after can of air duster? Or are you thinking about picking up an electronic air duster? Well, in this video, I'll take you through the O-Polar air duster vacuum and tell you if it's a true replacement for canned air, or is it just blowing hot air? Or do you want to skip this video and not have to hear me gab about it for five minutes? All right, I'll save you some time. If you work on computers or electronics a lot like I do, just buy it and you'll never have to buy another canned air in your entire life. However, if you don't use canned air that much in the first place, this may take you several years to make up the price. Well, that's the bottom line, but if you want to stick around and see the old Polar Electric Duster go up against the canned air, thanks for hanging out and let's get into it. So Old Polar is a relatively new company that was founded in 2015. They specialize in cooling fans, laptop fans, humidifiers, and space heaters. The unit I'm testing today is the O Polar 2-in-1 Duster Vacuum. And if you've been shopping around for other electronic dusters like Opolar Straightforward Air Duster, these both have the same 6,000 RPM motor and house 6,000 milliamp an hour batteries. It's just this one can function as a vacuum in addition. Okay, so the Opolar comes with three attachments, one vacuum attachment with a retractable bristle head, a standard air blower attachment, and an air blower attachment with a bristle head to loosen up the tough debris off of what you're trying to clean. A USB micro B cable is also provided in the package and connects to the bottom of the duster. This air duster is about three inches wide and just shy of about 10 inches high with the dust collector cup on or just over five inches high without it. The dust collector is completely removable with just a twist and grants access to the filter. The filter is plastic and washable, which means this is a lifetime filter and you'll not have to buy another one for the life of the duster. I will mention that if you do wash this filter, make sure it's completely dry before putting it back on, even though it doesn't say that on the old Polar website. Cleaning the filter is super easy Easy because you can just use the duster itself to blow out all the debris. This duster has two speeds. You click it once for low and twice for high. The low speed is rated at 33,000 RPM while the high speed claims to be at 60,000 RPM. There are two settings that you can change by twisting the housing of the duster. The first setting blows air out through the air nozzle and the second setting sucks air in through the top of the tank. All right, so now let the games begin. Let's see how well Opolar's electronic air duster stands up to good old fashioned canned air. For this comparison, I used the only air I had available, which was a can of Surfon brand electronics duster that I got from Walmart. It should be noted that to make this a fair comparison, I used a brand new can of air. However, the downside of this was that some of the liquid propellant came out during the test because it was so full. Okay, so the first thing I noticed when I turned on the old Polar Air Duster was that it was quite loud, even on both low and high settings. While on the low settings, the old Polar hung around 64 decibels, while on the high settings, it reached a little over 70 decibels. This is in contrast to canned air, which maxed out at 53 decibels. So on a side note, I know you guys can't tell from this video, but this thing is pretty loud. So if you want to use it late at night and you have roommates, just be mindful of that. And now on to the anemometer test. I wanted to make this a fair fight, so I used a brand new can of air. Canned air achieved a peak wind rating of about 26 meters a second, while the old Polar Electric Duster pretty much matched it with 25.8 meters a second. This difference is within a normal margin of error, so I'd call it a draw. And now on to the goldfish test. Although cleanup with the canned air was much quicker and easier, some of the liquid propellant came out, so I'd give the edge to the old Polar Electric Duster on this test. The only other real world test that I can configure from stuff in my house was an old carbon filter from an air purifier I had running for a few months. The canned air started out quite strong, but again, some of the liquid propellant came out and got on the filter. I will say that the canned air did remove more dust at the beginning, but overall they both performed pretty much the same. And the next test will see how long you can keep pushing air out on a single press. On the canned air, I was able to get a pretty sustained stream of air for about 18 seconds, but then it significantly began to lose pressure to the point it was pretty much unusable at about 30 seconds. This test was a no contest because the Opolar can run for 30 minutes according to the Opolar website, and I didn't want to wait that long. And now on to the real world scenario. I don't know about you guys, but when I game, I like to have some snacks.
after my epic game sesh, let's see how the old puller matched up against canned air in this super realistic scenario. I will have to say that because the canned air is blowing air through a straw, it was more concentrated so it actually removed more of the popcorn powder than the old puller did. However, as an all test, the liquid propellant got all over the place. I would call this a tie, however, when I flipped the old puller over to the vacuum setting, I managed to really get the cleaning done. And now on to the most subjective of the comparisons, which is pricing. The old Polar retails for about $99 on Amazon, which I got for about $80 on sale, while Air Duster ranges in price from $4 to $8 a can. I purchased a four pack of the Surfon canned air for a little over $13, making it about $3.25 a can. This is where it will get subjective. I'm an avid computer builder and I review tech stuff, so I go through about one can of air every couple of weeks. If I'm cleaning out an old computer or salvaging parts, I can actually go through a whole can of air in one day. So if you price that out using one can of air every two weeks would cost you about $84.5 a year. However, when I was looking at all my Costco and Amazon receipts, I found that I actually spent $112 last year on canned air. I would say an average PC builder or hobbyist goes through about one can a month, so let's say about $39 a year. So it would take about two years to justify the price of an electronic air duster. I should mention that one of the benefits of canned air is that I can buy a four pack of canned air and keep two at my house and two at work. The old polar is expensive and I can only afford to have one and it stays in my house. For those reasons, I'm going to call this one a draw because it depends on how much you're going to use an air duster in the first place. And the last part of the comparisons are my initial impressions. These are things that I liked about canned air and things I like about the old polar. What I liked about the canned air is that it's simple and the stream of air is more concentrated by the straw nozzle. Canned air needs no time to spool up so as soon as you press the trigger nozzle, air comes out in full force. This is in comparison to the O Polar Duster. On the O Polar Duster, you press the button once for low and twice for high. However, it takes a little while to spool up to full speed and I found myself accidentally clicking it on and off. I will say that O Polar Standalone Air Duster has a trigger instead of a button and it's a one speed. So if I wanted a straight air duster, I probably would have bought that one. Okay, what I don't like about canned air, obviously, is the propellant occasionally sprays out onto my circuit boards. The old polar has no residue, it's just straight air. One thing I didn't like about the old polar duster is that the air is ejected out the side of the unit. As I was using the duster, the exhaust port actually started blowing things off my desk. With canned air, air only comes out in one place, which is the nozzle. Alright, with all the tests complete, we have come to the question of who won the battle of the air. Based on the tests conducted, I would say that both contenders matched each other on output. However, I would say that the old polar was a clear winner, just based on the fact that you don't have to deal with the liquid propellant. Aside from the brand and model, having an electronic duster means that I don't have to keep several cans of air in my toolbox. What definitely pushed the old polar across the finish line was its versatility. You can use the old polar on pretty much anything. I can use it for woodworking, car detailing, house cleaning, and even my art. The vacuum on it works pretty good too. I would say that if you're in the market for an electronic duster and you go through a fair amount of canned air, go ahead and pick one up, it's totally worth it. Just remember to keep it charged and maybe keep a canned air around just as an emergency. All right, well that's it guys. Thanks for hanging out to the end. I hope this video helped you decide if an electronic air duster is for you. And let me know what you think about the video in the comments below. If you wanna see more of this kind of content, you can hit the like and subscribe button at the bottom. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments or hit me up on my stream. I stream Thursday through Saturday nights on Twitch. See you next time.